This is my declaration to be fully alive, fully alive, healing. This is my Reclamation of my ancestral, ancestral wisdom. The earth, it saved it for me. And I And we'll have friends and family living here with us too, hopefully three to five family. I really belong on the earth. Like I really belong where I can see the sky, where I can touch water, where I can breathe fresh air. And at many of the schools where I've worked, I've been able to do that and like engage my students with the outdoors. There's been flexibility around, you know, the setting of our projects. And as my school started to constrict around that by moving to a location that had high security, where there wasn't nature, where we're expected to be in the classroom, I felt this dimming of my spirit and this dimming of my ability to be the teacher that I wanted to be. So I needed to deconstruct my false narrative of scarcity. This idea that this one particular job was the only thing that I deserved, was the only thing I could ever have, um, was the only thing that I merited, and that wasn't true. And through the process of exploring options, the external world proved to me that that wasn't true, um, which was important. I started to reach out and people were saying, oh, we'd love to hire you for this consulting gig, or we'd love to have you come work for us part time, or you could be adjunct. So the world was proving that to me. But still, it took a long time for me to believe that. And that was really tied into just my own sense of worth and belonging. So that spiritual work has looked like asking my ancestors you know, I do a lot of dream work with my uh, forebears of my ancestors who've gone before and asking them for advice. And there was one point in the journey where my grandfather, um, who is an amazing person, he's a, a Haitian man in blessed memory, and came to the United States as a teenager, not speaking English, with no formal education, and graduated from BU, went to MIT, 
ended up working on the navigation system for Apollo 11 with NASA and became this accomplished engineer with many, many patents. And what he had to confront as a black man in America, you know, pre-civil rights movement is, is really immense. And he just was very clear um, when he spoke to me in my dream that I was like not to settle, that I was to reach for whatever I could imagine and take the best thing offered for myself and my children. All of our lineages have different destinies, but that's really the, the destiny that he set forth for our lineage. This destiny of like black excellence, that even spaces that weren't designed for us, like we go into them and we claim them and we transform them and then we make way for other people to enter those spaces. Yeah, it just reminded me that I'm not alone and that my ancestors' hands are at my back with those decisions and that I don't have to make them by myself. Mm -hmm. So a big part of what gave me the courage was the community believing in this project. Um, specifically, you know, we've run Black and Latino Farmers Immersion for many years, and now I've had hundreds of people come through who are interested in deepening their relationship with land, growing food for themselves, or growing food as a business. And hearing from people that their experience here gave them a picture of what's possible if they were free. I think there's one woman who told me, she said, if resilience were a cup, mine would be overflowing at the end of this experience. And that type of reflection being commonplace made me feel not only supported, but this imperative to do the work I was put on the planet to do. That it actually would be a disservice to the community and to the world for me to compromise and do something that was just okay or just good enough and not something where I was bringing like my full intelligence and my full heart and my full spirit. Because in this project, in Soul Fire Farm, and specifically our trainings for, for farmers of color and, and healers of color, we do the spiritual work. We do the ancestor work. Like, we cook. We tend the land. We identify wildflowers. We delve into our history. We do conflicts, mediation, and counseling. Like, all of these aspects of my experience and, and things that make me who I am, like, are relevant here. And there's a way that in public schools or in the nonprofit world, like only one fraction of me is relevant. And my wish, not just for myself, but for my family and for our people, is that we all get to inhabit spaces where all of us is relevant, where we don't have to hold back any part of who we are or compromise it or hide it under a bushel. Uh, because then, then we are fully alive and we are like healing and moving towards liberation. I think too about the way that a single tree doesn't have the capacity to feed itself. It doesn't know how to break down minerals. It can't store enough carbon. So the trees have figured out how to collaborate with like fungal mycelium and each other in this super organism where literally if one tree knows that it's going to die, it will dump all of its carbon and all of its sugars and all of its nutrients into the network to save its younger sisters and brothers because it knows it's on its way out. And they talk to each other and they warn each other. And there's just so much overlooked intelligence there. When I take the time and when I allow space in my life to really listen to what nature has to teach, like all the answers that we need are there and they've always been there. And I think our ancestors had more systems in place for how to listen and integrate that. Ceremonial practices, vision quests, elder councils that were in touch with nature, with nature spirits and communicating those lessons and that information to the community. And that's a, that's a loss for us. And I think particularly in the black community, because we've been so traumatized by slavery and sharecropping and convict leasing and share, you know, all of these oppressions that are land based, a lot of our communities fled the land, confusing her with the oppression itself and made our, our way to urban communities and cut that off. But with that disconnection, which makes sense and is a, a really, um, thoughtful survival strategy, I think we also lost this source of wisdom and healing and resilience. So one of the things that is so important to me about the work here is like reclaiming that land-based connection and that right to belong on land on our own terms, on our own like free, free will and sovereign terms.
Lift my hand. 